Hello students, welcome to class 8 computer science. Today we are going to start with our chapter called networking concepts. I'll be completing this chapter in two parts and today is the part one of this series. Okay, so let us try to understand what a network is. So leave computers aside, what do we mean by networking? Networking means a collection, a collection of some objects so that and there should be some link between the objects. For example, let us consider this as a network of roads. So network of roads, why it is called as a network of roads? Because at first there is a collection of roads and from one road we can go to the other roads also. Therefore, we can say that it is a network of roads. Let's take a different example. Let's say we have, this is the logo of State Bank of India. Let's say we have different head offices of State Bank. Let's say this is the head office of SBI Guwahati. Okay. Let's say we have different branches of SBI. Let's say this is the head office of SBI Kolkata. And let's say we have an head office in SBI Chennai also. Now, there will be some kind of communication between these three headquarters. Yes. And that kind of, if communication takes place between different branches, then we can say that a network has been formed. Now let's come to the part of computer. Let's say, so this is called as a network of banks. Now let us come to computers. So if you buy only a single computer at your home and if you're just using it, it is not called as a network. But if you buy more than one computers, but buying just more than one computer will not form a network. If you connect them only then a network will be formed. For example, let us say this is one PC. Let's name it as PC1. This is the second PC. Let's name it as PC2. Let's say this is the third PC. Let's name it as PC3. So let's say you have three rooms in your house and in each of the rooms you have bought three PCs and you are using them individually. If you are using them individually, then you cannot say that a network has been formed. For a network to be formed, there must be some kind of link between these computers. So if a link is established, then what do we say it to be? We say it to be a network of computers, which brings us to the definition of computer networking. So what is a computer network? A computer network may be defined as a collection of interconnected computers that are connected by communication link. Why interconnected? Because for communication to happen between these computers, there must be some kind of connection. Therefore, we are saying the computers must be interconnected. Why interconnection is required? Because without interconnection, we cannot share information among different computers. And sharing information is the main aim of networking. So, the communication links may be wired or it may be wireless also. Okay. So, two computers are said to be interconnected if they are capable of exchanging information. So, if the computers are capable of exchanging information, then we can say that the computers are interconnected. For example, uh, let's say this is one computer, this is the second computer, this is the third computer if there is no connection between these three among these three computers then we say that there is no network is formed but if it is connected via let's say this is a wired medium then we say that network has been formed but if communication happens through wireless waves also then also we'll say that the network is formed so it can be wired also and it may be wireless medium also okay so what are the advantages of networking? So the first advantage of networking is efficient use of storage media. Let's say you have three computers and they are connected in a network. So you need not store the same files in each of the ma machines. You can uh, take a common storage and in that common storage, you can store the files and therefore the memory is also saved. Next is preserving information. So in case of a network, some backups are kept in each of the computers. As backups are kept, even if one computer 
crashes also, the other computers will remain and our information will still remain even if a computer is crashed. Next is reduction in hardware cost. Let's try to understand it with the help of an example. So let's say we have these network three computers and they are not connected in a network and all these three computers require the job of a printer. Let's say I buy printer for each computer. Let's say it to be P1. Let's say this is the second printer P2 and let's say it is the third printer. Let's name it as P3. Now for buying three computers, three printers, let's say the cost of one printer is 5000. So the total cost of this particular office, let's say this is a office for buying printers is how much it is your 15,000. But instead of 15,000, just by spending 5000, we can do our work. Let's say, let's see how we can do our work. Let's say now we have only one printer. Then if we connect these three computers okay and this printer to the first computer only then only with the help of one printer we can what we can do we can do our job of printing therefore this leads to a reduction in hardware cost so what is hardware the physical components of a computer which can be touched and felt it is known as your hardware okay so here instead of three printers as we are able to do our job with just one printer therefore we can see say that our hardware cost has been reduced drastically so this is also one of the advantages of networking next is efficiency so if we use network so from one computer only we can delete files update files of other computers also which is a very efficient technique uh, as compared to deleting or updating each system uh, separately. Let's say you want to install Windows 8 in each of these computers. Now, if the computers are connected in a network, instead of installing uh, Windows 8 in each of the computers separately, we can just install it in one main machine and from the, there the uh, operating system files can be copied to the other machines. Next is redundancy. Redundancy means suppose the computers of an office are connected in a computer network. Now each of these persons who will be sitting at those computers will uh, require some documents to be shared. Now if we connect the computers to a network then instead of printing these documents what we can do we can just share it online. That means the cost of printing the hard copies hard copies means printable copies will be significantly reduced because redundancy is reduced what is redundancy redundancy means repetition if one thing is copied to uh, various other things then it is known as repetition but here by the advantage of networking that is redundancy what we can do if we require printable copies instead of printing the copies we can just share the copies online okay so next is quickest document delivery if computers are connected in a network then the documents or files can be shared in a fraction of a second so these were the advantages of networking now let's go to the disadvantages of networking what are the disadvantages the first disadvantage is that systems may become more sophisticated and complex Obviously, if you connect more than one computers, then your entire system will become more sophisticated and more complex. Next, bad management of network may make the devices unusable. So if you are not able to manage your network efficiently, then a problem in one computer may lead to the entire network failure. Next is dependency on a central server may disrupt the entire network in case of central server failure. What this means is that let's say we have this three computers and this is the let's say the main computer. Main computer is known as the uh, admin computer or the server computer. So if these two let's say this is PC2, PC3. If PC2 and 3 are dependent on PC1 
but if for some reason the PC1 only fails, then what will happen? All the, the entire network will lead to a failure. So this is also one of the disadvantages of networking. File security may be a threat. So if you are using the computers in isolation, there is no risk of file security. But if you connect your computers to a network, there may be a threat of file security. Unauthorized users may be able to read your confidential information. Next, let's see how networks that we see in the present form has come into being. So the first network came into existence in the year 1969. The first network is known as ARPANET or Advanced Research Project Agency Network. Next, in mid-1980s, NSFNet came whose full form is National Science Foundation Network. Let's try to see it with the help of a chart. So in 1969, as I already mentioned, what came? ARPANET came. ARPANET is a network. Then, so what was the main use of ARPANET? The main use of ARPANET was to connect computers at US Defense and different universities. After ARPANET, in 1980, the network known as NSFNet came into being. So NSFNet was a high capacity network which was used strictly for academic and engineering research. After that, by 1990, <coughs> various other network came and all those networks were interconnected to each other, which is known as your internet. So, the internetworking of ARPANET and NSFNet and other private networks lead, led to internet. Let's me explain you with the help of an example. It will be better. So let's say we have ARPANET. Let's say these are the computers. Let's say this is the network ARPANET. Let's say we have another network. Let's say this is NSFNet. It came in mid 1980s. Okay, so now by nine, so it came in 1969. Now by 1990s, various other networks were formed. Let's say this is, let's say N1. Let's say this is N2. It's not that network will be formed by three or four computers only. There can be various computers. Let's say this is network N3. Now all these small small networks were connected to each other okay now what has been formed a network of network has been formed so these were already networks now from these small small networks a different network has been formed that means we say it to be a network of networks and this network of network is known as inter net so with the connection of these small small networks when all the networks in the world are connected then we say it to be internet okay so what can be concluded it can be concluded that internet is the network of networks okay i hope the evolution is clear now let's go to the components of a network before proceeding further we need to know about different devices that are being used in a network Let's try to see those devices one by one. So let's say this is the diagram of a network. So this is the server. Server means the main computer. Let's try to understand host or node. So the computers or devices that are connected to a network are called host or node. So if you connect your computers to a network, we will refer to them by a name known as host or node. So whenever I'll be referring to the word node or host, you should not get confused. I am referring to the computers or the devices that are connected in a network. Next is server. What is server? A server is a node that facilitates networking ta tasks by serving the clients. So what is server? Server is the main computer which serves other computers. For example, let's say I am teaching in a class. So I am giving you the knowledge. So I'll be, I'll be a server. Now, who is receiving the knowledge? You all are receiving in the knowledge. So the persons or the computers who are getting the information, who are receiving the information 
from the main computer they are known as clients so what is a client a client is a node that requests the services of a server remember this example of student and teacher teacher is the server and students are the client okay so from this diagram we can say that this these are what these are your nodes this is the server because it is serving the other clients now let's go to the next computer which is transmission media so what is transmission media so for the data to go from one place to another some kind of uh, wires are required or some wireless mediums are required for example for going from one place to another what do you require you require roads similarly for for data to travel from one place to another we require some wires or some wireless medium so which is known as the transmission medium so what is transmission media the wired cables or wireless media through which data travels is known as transmission media okay next is we'll go to we'll just see a few examples of wired and wireless transmission media so some examples of wired transmission media are twisted pair cables coaxial cables fiber optic cables etc i'll not go into the details of this because these parts are of a little bit advanced level and you will get it in your class 12. Next, some examples of wireless transmission media are microwaves and radio waves. Now, you just need to know that with the help of this transmission media, data can go from one place to another. Let's see some pictures of the wired transmission media. So, this is your twisted pair cables. Here, two cables are twisted around each other uh, in order to form a double helix structure. More about this in class 12. So, this is known as your coaxial cable it is mainly used in cable tv networks and the best one it is your the optical fiber cables and it is the most costly also but it is the fastest mode of communication among all these method of, methods of communication now uh, we have wireless transmission media also but those are basically waves so it cannot be shown with the help of a diagram i hope this session was useful i'll see you again in your next part Till then, have a nice day.